KRFO Radio. Uh, happy to bring in a guy who might not be as happy today as last week, Todd Walking Stick, uh, Oatana's Todd Walking Stick, Minnesota Vikings fan. I, I'm glad you're willing to talk with me, Todd, as a, a good sports fan like you are after a loss for the Vikings, just like we chatted after a win last week when everyone was feeling real good after that Monday night victory over New Orleans. How much does a 26-9 to loss at Pittsburgh take you down uh, in week two? Honestly, not too much. Last year, we started out 5-0, and all, all hyped, and then, you know, collapsed. So yesterday, I, I had to be really careful, you know, after the Saints win, to get too high. But I knew in Pittsburgh, and I didn't know, like anybody else, Bradford wasn't going to be there until I got home from church. So, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, the way the offensive line played yesterday, I don't know if Bradford probably was a good thing he was out because he might have got killed yesterday. He can't move like Keenum can. What happened to the offensive line then, which was pretty good in week one, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, going into Pittsburgh, they, those guys are just animals in their own house. I, okay. They're just good. They're solid. But, you know, it's, our offensive line still has to show up. And they just they didn't. And, uh, you know, the penalties that were called, I wish I could even say they weren't. But, man, there were some blatant grabs by our guys. So uh, what? Uh, and then Ben Roethlisberger had a good game, uh, 243 yards, I think it was, and a couple of touchdowns. Uh, what was it about Pittsburgh's offense that, or Minnesota's defense, that allowed the Steelers to move up and down the field a bit? A couple of passes, pass interference calls, some okay. deep runs. Trey Wayne's got caught, and Rhodes got caught. So that was a couple um, scoring opportunities after the penalties were marked off. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, honestly, people might argue with me, but I thought our defense played pretty decent. Uh, okay. You know, Antonio Brown was shut down pretty good by Rhodes, minus the pass interference. And I thought we did a real good job on Levy and Bell, holding them down to 100 yards. Uh, you know, I thought Lindvall Joseph came to play in uh, Everson Griffin. I really thought the defense wasn't too bad. We had some terrible penalties that were killed us. And the defense ended up being out there quite a bit. The offense so it didn't get much going, so the defense is out there so much longer. And uh, as the game uh, continued on, I know Pittsburgh kicked a number of field goals, but at least the defense, uh, as you say, the, the defense played okay. Yeah, you know, another three points for Pittsburgh was they missed a 51-yard 50 50 field goal mm-hmm. left, and, and then um, we were flagged for a wrong lineup on the uh, defensive line. I've it was just everybody shifted to one side, and, and then they got the re kick and got three points. I mean, there's just things like that you just cannot do home or away and hope to be successful. And then the Vikings ran a fake uh, punt. That was sometime in the third quarter, I believe, that uh, didn't work out and gave Pittsburgh a short field as well, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I did like that call. It just okay. kind of sparked the offense, even though it wasn't, wasn't even close to being successful. I mean, that guy was well covered credit Pittsburgh's defense, but I did like the, it shocked me um, <laughs> that we tried it, especially in our own zone, but, um, you know, another play yesterday with the Robeson, it was fourth and one for Pittsburgh on their own side of that, wow, they're going, and the mm-hmm. jumps outside, mm-hmm. gives them an you know, automatic first, so there was just, you, you can't overcome that kind of, uh, I'll call it dumbness. Is there anything on the offense that was uh, decent or good from uh, from your perspective, Todd? Yeah, I mean, the first half, Cook got shut down pretty good, and then the third quarter, he found that spark. Okay. Had the touchdown, but it was called back, and then, like, the six-inch line, and then C.J. Ham got. So either way, those one of those guys got the first touchdown of their career, and so Ham got his. But, you know, um, I thought Rudolph, there was a pass from Keenum that I thought was about way too high for anybody, and Rudolph somehow snagged it. Um, you know, there's a couple hot, uh, bright spots, but overall, no, our offense was pretty rough yesterday. As as we chat, uh, and I, I'm not sure, I myself don't know what the Vikings have indicated regarding Bradford. Do you know anything uh, right now on here on Monday afternoon about his status for Sunday's game? Well, I read they were going to do a treatment, and you know, if the treatment goes well, he'll play Sunday. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be a game time decision, but this will be a chance for Keenum to get all week of the reps for first string, whereas last week he didn't get hardly any, so you know, to put a guy in with not much reps behind the first string, kind of not a good idea to come into a game, but what choice do you have? And then, uh, Tampa, so Tampa Bay is the opponent coming in. Uh, do you have a scouting report for us or a feeling about this coming Sunday's game, Todd? Uh, 
I was listening to the Tampa Bay station, and they're not real high in their offense. Okay. Uh, Jameis Winston, uh, you know, I, I think that kid is big, and he's going to be tough to take down. Uh, we just got a good good pass rush on him. It's going to be home games for the crowd. Should be the ally. Um, I was listening to K-Fan yesterday, and a lot of people were like, let's tank the season if Bradford's out. It's like, oh, man, we're one and one. <laughs> don't, don't talk like that. One and one is not by any means over. It's just, you know, you, you just it's a team. So not if Bradford's out, Somebody else has got to step up. Yeah. I'll be honest, I, I tuned in a little bit during one of those post-game segments, and the, the announcers started off talking about uh, week one we were talking Super Bowl, now we're talking the season over, and I thought, you know, that's that's a little too extreme one way than the other. I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to go listen to something else. So that, that attitude on that Twin Cities station just kind of turned me off, and I left. I was shocked. I really was. I, you know, was I happy we lost? No, but you know, I still go to work and I still uh, have my family, and the day goes on. But um, <laughs> not going to lose my mind over one loss. <laughs> it's in Pittsburgh. It's tough to win in Pittsburgh. We have no our backups playing. I mean, our backup quarterback is playing. I mean, the odds are against us, but you never you got to play the game like any game. So I have hope, but I mean, I'm not going to be depressed <laughs> over one and one. So Pittsburgh gets that win. Tampa is next this coming weekend. Uh, as far as Minas- as far as other local football teams, Todd, that Owatonna High School football team, when they play Austin, it gets kind of crazy, and we saw that on on Friday night. Owatonna won the game by a bunch, but you just felt Austin was was in it for a long time because they were scoring on big plays themselves, seventy to thirty six. And this was supposed to be Owatonna's toughest test of the season so far, and they win by thirty four points. Yeah, I, I mean, I was at the game like yourself, and I, I kind of like those kind of games. I mean, mm-hmm. the defense goes the kind of points, but I like high scoring games. And man, Jason Williamson Oof. had the game of a lifetime. Uh, I was talking to Sam Hilly by text, and <laughs> you know, he knew, he knew too that his record was tied, and so we got two great kids that are in the record books for tied. But you know, Austin had that like fifty plus yard run for a touchdown as Austin Williamson takes it back for. Yeah, eighty plus yards. Like man, by the time you sit down, it's time to stand up again. <laughs> and Williamson was in attendance at that Gopher game on Saturday, and Stelter got a sack. Minnesota Gophers won their game uh, over uh, Middle Tennessee in very resounding fashion. So the Gophers are three and zero, and people should be pretty excited about that. I was at that game too. Were you? So awesome. I was. Um, I was nine rows off the field in the end zone, and uh, I saw the Stelter sack, and I te- I tweeted to him, you know, congrats and. <laughs> It's just fun. I mean, I hope he didn't answer right away. <laughs> no, no, later that night. You know, he's such a nice young man. I he he responds to my tweets, and um, I just want the best for him. I mean, it's a senior year. He's been through what three different coaches in four years. Yeah, you just got to pull for a kid like that. To you know, it's his last year. Just enjoy it. Indeed. Well, Todd, I I, I hope you get all. Uh ramped up and ready to go on Sunday for a noon kickoff with Tampa coming in at U.S. Bank Stadium uh, and uh, look for a team that's now 1-1, one and one, the Vikings, to rebound on Sunday. Hey, I was just going to add one thing on uh, Lake yeah. South Oatana Girls soccer game, if you don't mind. Absolutely. That's great news, too. I wish people could have been there. It was the craziest game. I mean, Nicole Vargas scored for Oatana's one nothing at half, and then early in the second half, Lakeville South found a net. was 1-1, and then there was a handball in the box late in the game on South, and uh, Sophie Amundsen put it in. It was in the second overtime. She put it in, and uh, you have to play the full five minutes mm-hmm. overtime. So, I mean, it wasn't necessarily over. I think it was like a minute and a half left. But this is the thing. Late till South, with uh, I think four or five seconds left in the game, had a free kick. But they didn't put the ball. You're supposed to put it down and not moving, and it was rolling a little bit. And the girl kicked it. And as the ball was in the air, the whistle blew. And in soccer, when the whistle blows, the game's over. Okay. So went all the way to our goalie, Harstead, hit her fingers and kind of rolled into the net. And Lakeville South parents were jumping up and down. They thought they'd tied it. And then the uh, refs um, said no goal. And, oh, you, the emotion of self. Was, you had to be there to believe it. It was just people were irate. The goalie was running after the ref. Um, it was just, it was pretty. I was so happy for the Ohio girls because they worked their tails off. And you know to sweep north and south in one season. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if that's ever happened before, but I can't believe it has to sweep both both uh, Lakeville teams. So credit the girls for their hustle and um, 
the goalies, both Jamie Davis and Ann Horst, did play their butts off. And that ball actually went across in the air, and the horn, I didn't know that rule, but when the ball's in the air, it's dead. And so um, they thought it went in, and it did, but it didn't count. Wow! Wow! Oh my! What a what a uh, uh, what a finish that is! That's a, that's an unbelievable finish thrown on top of the fact that Owatonna got the sweep over the Lakeville teams. To have a finish like that just seems crazy. Yeah. So people know that we won in double overtime, but people may not know how how it ended. Just Julie Hart said uh, she knew the bell or whatever the horn had rang. Run. Uh huh. So I mean, she played a great game. Both the girls played a great goalie and so I was just happy those kids were they worked their butts off that's tough to be Lakeville teams all right well maybe this will be Oatana's year on the girls side the boys are having a good year as well yeah. they've had multiple state tournament appearances in the last five years three times the girls haven't had that chance yet maybe maybe this will be their year they're certainly proving it against those tough section teams up to this point Todd yeah it's been a great fall season for everybody so far and it's been exciting to watch all right. Well, we'll keep watching that, and uh, we'll bring you in and chat about some of these things as we move along as well. Owatonna's Todd Walking Stick. Great to talk to you, Todd. Uh, thank you. Have a great week.